Well, 41% of South Africans use the internet now. That placing the country fifth in Africa and 92nd worldwide for individual internet usage and above the world average, in fact, of 35.7%. That according to the 2013 State of Broadband report that released by the UN Broadband Commission. Affordable broadband connectivity services and applications are essential to modern society, offering widely recognized social and economic benefits. Let's talk more about this report. Joining us from Cape Town, Ian Duvenacher, Head of ICT for Africa at Frost and Sullivan. Uh, Ian, thanks so much for joining us today and of course talking about the advantages of being connected to the internet. So, uh, you know, when we look at, for example, from our own perspectives right now, you're looking at access to uh, certain applications uh, that work here in Africa, but uh, when you're looking at, you know, having iPhones, you can't have all the applications right now because we're still limited uh, by access to broadband and we're not as connected as developed world uh, players are when it comes to to some of those applications uh, but that you know that's the problems uh, that we're facing with iPhones but not everyone across the continent even has access to internet as it stands but you're looking at the growth rate when it comes to in internet penetration sitting at around 19 percent right now I mean what are your thoughts in terms of how quickly people are getting access to internet on the African continent and how quickly that growth rate is transpiring into access I think it's interesting to look at South Africa. So South Africa from last year to this year jumped from 21% to 41%, as you mentioned. On, in the rest of Africa, the rate is a lot slower. And I think that's a worrying factor, um, probably an advantage of South Africa, but if we look at Kenya and Nigeria, for instance, they only jumped a couple percentage points from last year to this year. And it might be something to do with, um, with how the stats are put together. But I do still think that the African continent is at a massive disadvantage because we are not connected. And we're not swapping over to smartphones, um, whether it be Android, Apple, or BlackBerry, quick enough to make use of you know, the internet in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mobile pen penetration rate in sub-Saharan Africa now sitting at around 53%. So one would assume um, you know, that that is quite a high number. Uh, but I suppose it's uh, really the, the issue there is, is not mobile penetration. It's smartphone penetration and access to the internet then once you've got that smartphone. So, so what are your thoughts in terms of the technology underpin that is needed to ensure that you have access to internet once you do, in fact, get your hands on that smartphone? Um, smartphones obviously gives you access to a certain extent. I think operators are quickly swapping over to technology that increasing, that's increasing the speed. So we're seeing more coverage of um, the countries mentioned. We're seeing a bit more uptake of smartphones, but the actual usage of it and individuals' education on what to do with a smartphone once they get it, mm -hmm. and whether it be applications available in the local languages, in the local context that actually provides value to the individual, I think that is one of the things holding us back. Although we're stopping over to smartphones and tablets and all that, um, what to do with it is still a big question in Africa. Social, social media ha has supported really the uptake of the technology and advanced technology services. So, so what are your thoughts in terms of how that uh, relationship is playing out in Africa right now? Because more and more people, of course, connected to Twitter, connected to Facebook. Um, what does that mean in terms of uh, connection to, to more advanced services uh, when it comes to technology? Um. I think social media is driving it quite a bit. I think if you look at the numbers, I think Egypt's sitting at 20th in the world in terms of connections. South Africa's around, around the 30s. So we are picking up quite a bit, and I think it's making people quite comfortable with, with technology and with the internet and with a different way of using it. And traditionally, we're, you know, there's quite a bit of storytelling and translating of information in a certain way. I think social media is definitely driving that um, in Africa, if you look at the, the Egypt example quite a while ago, and if you look at the stats on them this year, there was obviously a massive jump in internet usage and in social media, media usage as a result of um, quite a few things that we saw happening in that market. And I think you'll see the same in other markets where there's a bit of a trigger where people unite around a certain thing and social media is a thing that spreads it quicker, whether it's the, the driving force, you know, can't really um, decide that, but I think it, it, it enables it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. From a government perspective right now, I mean, apart from having broadband friendly practices, governments are also embracing uh, e-government platforms right now. We know like Nigeria, for example, has recently launched that. So, so what, are you, what are your thoughts in terms of how governments are moving online, if you could call it that, when it comes to their systems and becoming more e-friendly and how that is an important development when it comes to, to driving the uptake of internet uh, and, and digital economies? 
Yeah, I think it's critical. I think governments play a key role in this. Once once they make the services available, individuals will start using it. And it's obviously a dual-sided. So once you start using it on the one aspect, you'll start getting comfortable in using it for other uses. So as governments start driving it, I think technology environment in this country has become easier to use and friendlier. And um, governments become more client-centric to some extent, mm -hmm. making them more efficient, and the individuals are realizing the benefit of using technology in this way. I mean, just coming back to the South African example right now, we know the likes of, of MTN and Vodacom testing 4G here in South Africa. Um, and it's not so much the yeah. fact that uh, they don't have the technologies and the, the, the uh, you know, expertise to be able to roll it out. It's the fact that they need access to uh, broadband spectrum uh, from ACASA. So government also needs to, to jump on the bandwagon when it comes to, to being able to enable uh, you know, quicker broadband, specifically here in South Africa and way, way ahead of sub-Saharan Africa. So, so what are your thoughts in terms of government's broadband friendly practices and policies uh, across the board and I suppose South Africa being the example here. Yeah, so if you look at South Africa, um, I think the, the long term planning component um, in terms of broadband has been a bit of a worry. Um, there's plenty of national uh, broadband initiatives going on, there's plenty of, um, of planning going on. I think the actual role after making that available to individuals that would actually benefit from it, which I think is a critical component, is the individuals currently not accessing it. I think that's where we, we are not there yet. Um, if you look at a couple other countries outside of South Africa, um, it, it's, it seems like their planning on a government level is a bit better and you can see a bit more of a, almost a business friendly environment in terms of te technology emerging as a result of the practice that the government's put in place. So it is critical for governments to, to, to think in this environment but also to, to start um, laying out some of the actual infrastructure and start driving that to make access available.